Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. It Happens is a game about ant eaters eating ants. And this is a family weight game. It's a very bizarre that would be called It Happens, which is obviously is taken from the catchphrase with uh, dirty language in it, or what we perceived as non-family related language, and put in this game. So it, right there, it's kind of off-putting. What, what you get is a very light dice rolling, and you put the dice on places, and you're placing these dice and kind of wanting them to combine up to make these ant hills. It's a very light game. Your options are kind of limited it's based on what you roll and what the availability is of the ant mouse. You're kind of, kind of hamstrung into what you can do. So I would put this under light strategy. I would say there's a little bit going on here. Family weight, except for obviously the name of the game. I don't think that's family weight. But the game itself is fairly light. Now, as for dice placement games, there are games that I like so much better, like, say, an Alien Frontiers or a Kingsburg. Now, I would play this with maybe a 5-year-old to a 9-year-old, 10-year-old. Well, Kingsburg is probably where I'd pick up for that. So this would be maybe for a children's game, family light type game. I just find better ones, like Risky Business, I think is better. There's some better games that are out there than this one. It's not a terrible game. I think if you found this one fairly cheap, that you would have a good time. I'm not trashing it. I'm just saying that I don't know. It, it just wasn't something that like hung on to me that made me want to keep coming back to it. And I think that with the competition that's out there, you're going to find something better. So for me, it's going to be an ultimate purge, not one that I would keep in one, keep in my collection. And when I would just hold back recommending and say, you know what, maybe if you have family weight dice placement, are there better options? Have you already played those? You're looking for something more? I mean, I think you'd have to play a lot of dice placement games to get to this one. But the price point might hit it for you, the family weight might hit it for you, and the art might hit it for you. And if it hits on all those three, I think that you might have a winner here. For me, it will be a purge. Here's It Happens, which obviously they're meaning something else here. You can see the ants coming down and building up with the ant eater right there. So that's kind of what the theme of the game is going to be. A little small game. It's pretty portable, but it's not going to fit in your pocket or anything. Open it up. You're going to have some instructions, which we'll take a look at. Lots of empty space in here. Once again, this is probably for shipping, but a lot of this is very empty. You're going to have these boards. These are very thin. You will need to shuffle these up uh, each time that you play, but just kind of be aware that they're not the thickest things in the world. You're going to get a number of little tiny little hobbit dice, different colors. You're going to get chits. Now, these chits are pretty easy to to utilize and see the icons that are on them. And they're thick enough, so uh, pretty good there. And you're going to have any number of these little tiles. But this box could have been a lot smaller and a lot more portable if they had so chosen. And I think it may have been a bigger plus for the game. If you could have traveled with this a little bit easier, I think it would have made it for a better game. For the rules for It Happens, you're going to have to pull it out here. You can see components that are listed in color. Fantastic job, and Queen always does a great job on their rule books. I really like it. Here is setup, how to play, and kind of what you're doing. And on the back, the end of the game. Normally with Queen, you're gonna get those half things, but here you don't really need it because it's kind of a simple little family kid game. Uh, but very good job. You can see the pictures throughout. They also do a good job of changing the boards throughout, which is kind of nice. So you can see the different ones. And there's rules for two players, although I really wouldn't recommend this game for two players. To start the game, you're going to shuffle the game boards and put them down. You will take the five dice of your color and two worms, and this will be what you start the game out with. The rest of the components can just be put out. Then to start the game, you're going to take the top three termites, mounds, and you can kind of put them out on the board. And this is what the players will be playing with when they start the game. Start the game with five dice, but on your turn, you're going to take one dice and you're going to roll it. In this case, I rolled a six. Now, you can choose which mound you want to put it on. This one is worth six and five, six and four, four and two. So theoretically, this might have the most competition for it. Being that I have a six, you have to put in the leftmost space. And it has to be on the bottom first, and you'll be building to the top. Each color can only have one mound, so I couldn't do this and take up a second mound, although black could come in on their turn, yellow could go there, etc. That's kind of how you would add the dice. If another blue came out, they would take that spot right there. If you cover up a worm, then you will get a worm token to add to your collection. If you cover up an item, then you'll get that token item from the supply. 
Worm tokens you can keep or you can spend. If you spend these, you'll be utilizing these for special actions. Let's say you roll the dice and you're not happy with what you roll. You can give up one of your worm tokens to the supply and you can re-roll this, but you will be stuck with whatever you roll next. I could say maybe give up another worm token and do another re-roll if I so choose, but once I'm out of worm tokens or out of worm tokens I desire to use, I'm stuck with whatever I roll. Use one of these worm tokens to pass. So if I want somebody else to go and I kind of want to see what they're going to do in their turn, I can play this worm token, skip my turn and pass, and let the next person go until it comes back around me. I might want to do that to kind of see how the board fills up before I make these decisions of where I want to use this dice. You know, maybe I don't want to use another six there and get 12. If on the next turn black has five, you know, blue has four. So maybe I'll go ahead and stick this somewhere else, maybe there and get a worm token. Once all the dice have been placed or no more can be placed, then you would calculate who won. In this case, red has the most, six. So they would receive the six point marker. The blue would be second with five, so they would get the five point marker, and you would keep these face down in front of the players so the scoring can be hidden at the end of the game. So you will score each of the three here. After that, you will put out three new mounds, and you will do this four times and four rounds. Whoever has the most points, you count up all your points at the end of the, at the, end of the game. Whoever has the most points is the winner of It Happens. For a two-player game, there is a small adjustment to the rules. Each person will take two dice of another color. So let's say red is playing yellow. Red would take all of five of their dice plus two blue dice. Yellow would take all of their dice plus two blue dice. And all other rules would be in force and effect. So when you play a die, you can play either one of your reds or one of your blue. When you score... The imaginary blue player who only has four dice, two for the red player, two for the yellow, will still score as normal. Red will only score points for their own red, and yellow will only score points for their yellow. The rest of the rules remain intact, except for they will be placing out two blue dice as the game continues, following all rules in the three and four player variants. Who should buy this game? I think I would leave this game just for family weight. I think you want to have smaller children, like five to nine, five to ten that might enjoy this game with you, but you want something the parents can also play. The kids may not grasp the strategy as well as the parents, but I think they can hang in there. You could probably play this with non-gamers. I think it's fairly easy to pick up. There might be better options on the market than this one, but I think this one could definitely fit that bill. Really, I would say, do you like the theme? Do you like the art? Are you looking for a family weight, very light dice placement game? If so, and you click all those boxes, I think this is the game for you. If you don't click one of those boxes, I would say, hey, there might be better options out on the internet. Check around. It might not be this one. Not a terrible game. In fact, a decent game, a good game, you might say. But the competition is fierce in this theme and with this mechanism. And I would say it doesn't hold its weight. A purge for Thanks me. Thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate you tuning in. If you liked it, please like it and hit that little subscribe button. That really helps out the channel. Let's lets us know that you're getting the videos that you want. If you agreed or disagree with what I said, feel free to comment below. I'd love to hear what you have to say, and I promise that I will comment back. Thanks for watching, and everybody else, keep playing.